All right, folks, like I said, there's a whole lot of things we know we are supposed to be doing where sometimes maybe we don't know what we don't know. Okay, so that's what we're, we're, we're going to be kind of drawing a fine point on today is what you need to be doing on a daily basis so that you can be as productive as possible. Because remember, Elon Musk, right? You know, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, right? All those guys, Jeff Bezos, they all have the same 24 hours. How is it that they're able to get so much more accomplished in their in the period of their life, okay? It's by using the hours that they do get to the absolute optimal amount, okay? So let's get on into it, folks. The most important three activities, bar none, I don't care who you are, I don't care what market you're in, I don't care what you say, prospecting, presenting, and following up. Guys, type in the chat, why do you think those three activities, why do you think those three activities are the most important? Tell me, what do you got? What do you think between prospecting, presenting, and following up? Income producing activities. Yes, Lanny. Yes, sir. Exactly. Boom. Because of the only activities that can create business, 100%, guys, you have to do first things first. Okay. Those are the things that are the most valuable use of your time. Okay. So I'm going to play devil's advocate. So are you trying to say that like putting properties on LoopNet, MLS, and CoStar, that they're not that important? Not as important as those three things, right? These are the things that if you don't do them, I can make you one promise, your business will shrivel and die. The number one cause for the failure of any business, okay, and why most people have to go back to a nine to five, okay, isn't because of bad luck, isn't because their market stinks. It's because they're not doing enough prospecting, presenting, and following up. Okay? Prove me wrong, guys. All right? So prospecting, presenting, and following up, super duper important. So what we need to do is we need to figure out a way that we can architect our day so we're doing more of that than anything else. I'll tell you this one thing, guys. Okay? If you know a high-producing agent... Okay, I guarantee you, if not currently, right? Because a lot of like the a lot of high producing agents, they make it look easy, right? Um, but maybe they did a whole lot of this for a whole bunch of years and created a very big foundation of clients. You with me, guys? How many of you know a high producing agent that you're like, how do they do this? Well, how do they just get that? The phone just happens to ring for them. Type of one in the chat, guys. Um, so Katya says they bring in time and money. Yes. If you don't follow up, you're forgotten. You better believe it. Knowledge gaining activities for positive action. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. Okay. So Scott's with me. Lanny's with me. Olga's with me. Exactly. Guys, these are the things we need to figure out how to do. And we're going to get into that in just a second. All right, cool. So what we need to do guys, all right, is figure out what we need to do. Uh, what you do is create a, a flow chart of your business. This is very, very simple. Most of your businesses give or take a few items, there, there are about 10, maybe 12 steps, you know, between picking up the phone, you know, re researching, you know, going to appointments, uh, you know, putting things on, you know, creating flyers, bah, 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 right? You know, you you know, the 10 or 12 things that you you do uh, in the in the entire continuum of like going from researching a property to cashing a commission check. It's only about 10 or 12 items, guys, right? So what I did was I created a flow chart and I said to myself, hmm, how do I delegate more things away so I can do more prospecting, more presenting, and more following up, okay? And I created a flow chart around that um, and figured out what I need to do and what could be passed off to somebody else, okay? Do me a favor, folks. Type an exclamation, type a dollar sign in the chat if you know what your hourly rate is. And if you don't know what your hourly rate is, no problem, okay? Because what we're gonna do is we are going to teach you how to figure out your hourly rate, okay? It's very, very simple, folks. Take whatever you want to make in the next 12 months, whatever your goal is for maybe 2024, okay? We're already rounding out March. Can you believe it? A quarter of the year is over, huh? okay? Cool. So what you do is you take whatever you want. So let's just say for argument's sake, you want to make $500,000 this year. Sweet, good goal. Now, you're going to divide that by 2,000. Can anybody tell me why 2,000? Sounds like a kind of like a round number, doesn't it? Think about it, folks, right? 50 weeks of the year, 40 hours a week, all right? So I want everybody on the call right now, do me a favor and tell me what your hourly rate is. Whatever your goal is for this year, divided by 2,000. So as an example, you take 500,000, you divide it by 
2000 okay? So your hourly rate is $250 an hour. Boom, there we go. Lanny, okay, perfect, perfect example. $500 per hour, good stuff. You know how I know? That means that he wants to make a million dollars this year. Let's go. Pietro's at one one thirty seven fifty. Love it. That's a very specific goal. I love that. Good. Daryl's at two fifty. Good. 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 Okay. That's what we're talking about, folks. Okay. Because here's the thing: How can you value your time if you don't know what your time is worth? Okay. So knowing that Janet's time is worth five hundred an hour, and Job Johnson's is five hundred an hour, and Alyssa's is three fifty, and Pietro's is one thirty five, and Daryl's is two fifty. Does it make sense to do stuff that you could pay somebody else 15 or $18 an hour for? Does that make any sense in the world, guys? Yes or no? Type a big Y-E-S or a big N-O in the chat. Exactly. Exactly. Makes zero sense if you're spending $500 an hour, your, your, your time is worth $500 an hour. Makes zero sense to do things that you could pay somebody else a fraction of that, okay? Perfect example is, do you think Bill Gates mops the floors and cleans the toilets at, at Microsoft? Hell no, right? That's it's, it's absurd, right? Guys, you are the CEO of your own company. So you better not be doing the things that you can hire somebody to do administrative work. You can send it over, you know, overseas and, and pay someone five or six dollars an hour, guys. The global market, the US dollar is very, very strong. And, and five or six bucks an hour over in the Philippines goes a long way, okay? So my point is, what you can do is you can you can look at what your hourly rate is. Then the next thing you can do is you can map out all the, the tasks you need to do. And then guess what? Delegate it to somebody who you can pay less than your hourly rate. Guess what you just did, guys? You just bought back your time. Would you guys, let me, let me make this a question. How much would you give to have three hours back in your day? Type it in the chat, guys. Lanny, Maria, Olga, Daryl. What would you pay to have three hours back in your day? What would three hours, what would, if you could have a 27 hour day, right? Because have you guys ever said, myself included, man, I wish there were more hours in the day. Dang it. I, I, what, what would I be willing to do? Yep. Olga says 60 bucks. You better believe it. Why? Because think about it, folks. If you've got $200 an hour time and you're, and you, and Olga trades $60 an hour for that, guess what? She's making an extra $140 every hour that she pays somebody else 20 bucks an hour. You with me, guys? Okay. So the point is, folks, people say, oh, I wish there was more time. You can buy time, guys. Okay. I got 24 hours worth of productivity already, and it's not even 6 p.m. Ask me how, guys, because I have a team. So it's not just me that's working. I have a team that works. That's how you can multiply your efforts. With me, folks? Okay. Cool. So I invite you all to take a very, very good look at what you're doing and figuring out how you're going to get more productivity out of your day. Okay. Because guess what? More productivity of the right things, prospecting, presenting, and following up is going to make a major impact. Okay. So go out and get helps, get, get admins, figure out the, who, the, who the, instead of you doing the scrubbing of the toilets, metaphorically speaking, find somebody that can do that work for you so you can do more of what you do best, revenue producing activities, okay? So I want you to think about this, guys. Okay, so now, great. So now we got our, our heads fo focused on, okay, what is my time worth, okay? How am I gonna get other people? Now, let's talk about how we get you to do more of uh, the, the, the income producing activities. Number one, the biggest problem, the biggest distractor, guys, it's not your coworkers anymore, folks, okay? It's this silly little gadget, you know? It's a blessing and a curse. It's really amazing what you can do, but the problem is you're not able to focus when this thing is pinging and dinging and buzzing and you know, you're getting all kinds of updates. I can't stand this thing. I literally have to turn it over because I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear it I don't, and, and so forth because it's constantly distracting me. Do you guys know what flow state is? Type the word flow in the chat for me, if you guys know what, 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 what being in flow state is. Let's see what we got. Flow, we got flow, flow, flow. Good, 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 good. Guys, have you ever just been in that, like in that zone where just your brain is just firing and you're like, <clears throat> you're not distracted and just things are just coming and you got ideas, 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 and you're just really, really concentrating and just everything is just grooving. Yeah, exactly, Scott, just grooving, yep. Guys, that's flow state, okay? One little ding from Instagram or, you know, your friend sends you a silly meme or this or that, one 
distraction can set you back 25 minutes. Okay. So that's why guys, you need to protect your attention. Like your life depends on it because I'll tell you what your business depends on it. Okay. That's numero uno. So remove all distractions. Okay. If you have to turn your phone off or if you have to turn it into silent mode, I promise you that silly little meme that your friends is sent over. Okay. It's going to be there when you get done with your prospecting. But the only difference is you're going to have called and, and, and called 50 people and made new opportunities for your business you with me guys. Scott says, I do not understand why anyone leaves their audible alerts on. Exactly. hundred percent, Scott. It's crazy. It's, it's the worst distraction ever. Okay. Next up guys, I want you to consider this. Use your calendar as your guide, not your inbox. And I'll give you a very, very simple reasoning for this. When someone emails you, typically, whose agenda is that for? Theirs or yours? Type that in the chat, guys. Whose agenda are you working from when someone sends you an email requesting something of you? Boom, exactly. Theirs, 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 theirs. Exactly. Now, here's the thing, folks. If you always go out helping other people and you don't help yourself and do the things that are the most important for your business, you're not going to have a business, okay? Exactly, well put, Bernard. They are the boss. You better believe it. So what you need to do, folks, is you need to make your calendar your guide, okay? Please resist the temptation, okay? Number one, email is not that important. That deal that's falling apart at 825 will still be falling apart at 10 o'clock when you finish your prospecting. Turn your email off, okay? I don't check my email so 11, sometimes 12 o'clock. Some people are like, oh my God, that's heresy. I don't care. You know why? Because I'm conditioning people that I am not gonna, you're not gonna send me an email and get a response and get something back, you know, 10 minutes later. It's just not gonna, how it's gonna work. It's gonna be on my schedule. Why? Because my calendar is my guide, not my inbox, okay? With me, folks? Next up, the Pomodoro method. Anybody familiar with this, guys? Okay, this is another strategy you can use, <clears throat> excuse me, in order to be uh, to be in, in flow state, or at least as close to it as possible. What you do is you set, you know, those good old fashioned kitchen timers, right? Or you could just use your, your iPhone timer. Okay, set it for 25 minutes. Okay, and then turn off, turn your phone to airplane mode and get in, get down to business. What that'll allow you to do, folks, is it'll allow you to actually focus on the things that are the most important, okay? After 25 minutes, you can get a whole lot of stuff done in 25 minutes, folks, okay? After 25 minutes, go ahead and then set it, set the timer for five minutes, take a break, get up, move around a little bit, okay? And then you set it down again for another 25 minute uh, block. What that allows you to do, folks, okay, is focus deep and intently for a solid, uh, you know, two 25 minute chunks per hour. So you're concentrating for 50 minutes per hour. I promise you folks, you'll have some of the most productive hours of your life if you do that, okay? Make sure you do that, all right? The next thing is folks, okay, control your day, control your income. The reason I, I, I wrote it this way, folks, is the one thing, like I said, we have, is we have 24 hours and I'm sure you don't wanna work all of them. So the one thing you can do is be judicious with your time, okay? Someone coming, uh, so so for those of you, let, let, let's roll it back. Do me a favor, type into the chat again what your hourly rate is. Go ahead and type that in the chat. Let's see what you got. Okay, perfect. Love it. Daryl, 250. Okay, guys, all right. Let's, uh, let's use uh, uh, Daryl as an example. Daryl, $250 an hour, okay? So that's 125 every 30 minutes. What's a half of 125? What is that, like 62.50, right? Okay. Would any of you ever take a $50 bill and rip it up, right? Never in a million years, okay? But, that, but if Daryl took 15 minutes to chit chat with a coworker or take a personal call during the day, that's the literal equivalent of ripping up a $50 bill, okay? The most important thing, okay, is for you to understand how valuable your time is. In fact, let's go let's go a, a, a step deeper because we think of, of an hours, okay? Everybody do me a favor. Whatever your hourly rate is, I want you to divide that by 60, okay? And type that in the chat. This is going to be an eye opener for a lot of you. A lot of you probably never thought about time so intently, right? What we need to do is we need to like wrangle time and get every last drip, every, every single last uh, 
um, dr drop out of the grape. Okay. So what was that? Okay. Yeah. There you go, Lanny. $8 and 33 cents a minute. Pietro, $2 and 29 cents a minute. Okay. Think of what a five minute phone call is for Lanny. Five minute phone calls about 50 bucks. Look at what's, what's, what's eight times five, right? 40. Yeah. A little over 40 bucks. Okay. You with me folks. Okay. For geo five minute phone call, that's $12 and 50 cents. Okay, start thinking about your time this way, folks, because I promise you, there are enough hours of the day. You just haven't figured out strategies to get the most out of them. Does that make sense, guys? Type a one in the chat if that's like, yeah, okay, cool. Because what I want you guys to walk away with today is how am I going to look at that 24 hours we have on the calendar and create strategies so that not only can I get more of my own time, okay, I can focus better, I can have less distractions, but then I'm going to leverage other people's time to do all the things that aren't prospecting, presenting, and following up. You with me, guys? Any light bulbs going off, guys? Type a, type a, an exclamation point in the chat if like you guys are getting any light bulbs here. All right? Cool. Okay, Pietro's with me, Lanny's with me. Good, 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 good. Love it, love it. All right, next thing is, folks, okay? And this has to do with not the quantity, but the quality of your day. How many of you, and this is myself included, guys, I, I'm, I'm just as as, uh, as guilty of this, you know, as, as anyone else, okay? How many of you have ever felt like your hair is on fire by about 11.30 a.m. because just stuff is just blowing up left and right, right? And then you're you're, you're just running and putting out fires. Ty type a capital Y, capital E, capital S if you've ever felt that way, okay? The metaphor I use is it feels like you got a wild tiger and you're trying to hold on to them by the tail and they're running all over the place. They're crazy and they're, and they're pulling you throughout your day. Yeah, exactly. Stop, drop and roll. Exactly, Lanny, right? So the point is, folks, all right, when you when you are in charge of your calendar, now here's the thing. It's never going to be 100%. You're going to get pulled off, your, off your, 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 your game sometimes. But the more conscious you are of setting up your day and being intentional about your day, Okay. And a big part of being intentional about your day, folks, work with sellers. You know why? Buyer calls you up and you don't have any sale listings. Guess what happens? They say jump. You say how high? Because you know that if you don't jump, they're going to go with somebody else that will. Period. End of story to us. To, to them, we are a dime a dozen. With me, folks? Okay. As opposed to when you're working with sellers, it's like having a tiger on a leash. You guide it, okay? That's how you move through your day, okay? In the mornings, you do your prospecting. And then you do some, some research and you prepare for your meetings. And in the afternoons, you're poised and you go to your meetings and stuff. And yes, things are going to pop up. Deals are going to fall through, sure. But at least you have a framework through which you're going to kind of work your day. Does that make sense, guys? Type a one in the chat if that makes some sense, okay? The more structured you are about your day, the much better chance you are of having 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 a little bit more peace of mind and going through day a little bit more gracefully, okay? Cool, 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 cool. Hope this makes a lot of sense, folks. Good stuff. All right. The importance of prospecting, folks. All right, let's talk about it. The importance of prospecting is, is very, very simple. Everything we do is a sales funnel, okay? A sales funnel is just, just like, a, like a, a, a water funnel, okay? You put something in the top, X amount comes out the bottom. But how much you put in the top directly determines how much comes out in the bottom in terms of profit. So think about it. The more you prospect, the more you earn. Period. End of story. There's a really cool uh, example I heard, and I, and I taught this to the students the other night, um, about they did a study. Okay, They took a pottery class, like a college-level pottery class, and they had group A. They said to them, hey, listen, your semester grade is going to depend on making one pot. And what we want you to do is make the absolute highest quality pot that you can. And they're like, okay, cool. So they set out to it. And they took the other group of students and they said, listen, folks, we just want you to crank out volume. We want to see how many pots you can create in the, the course of this semester. Okay, ready, steady, go. So they, what they did is they, the, the, the one group of students worked on quality, quality, quality. The other group of students worked on quantity, quantity, quantity. And guess who had the superior pot at the end of the semester? Type it in the chat. Who do you think, guys? Group A focused on quality or group B focused on quantity? If you said quality, you would be wrong. Folks, it's quantity. And I'll tell you why. 
Think of what happens when you focus on quantity. You get better. You, if Let's say you focused on qu quantity of calls. You hear the same objection over and over again. Sooner or later, you're going to figure out what to say. You hear the same you know, a conversational thread. You figure out ways to talk about it. You hear when you ask this question, it only gets answered three or four or five different ways. Okay. At a certain point, when you emphasize quantity and just get your dials in, get your dials in, get your dials in, what winds up happening, guys, you wind up getting pretty good. Okay. Your first thousand dials, eh, you're not so good. Next thousand, you're starting to get better by your third thousand, right? Which does, which sounds like a lot, but it's about 90 days at 50, 50 dials a day. It's not that many. There's 20 work days in the month. You could do a thousand in a month relatively easy in an hour to an hour and 15 minutes a day. Okay. The point is folks, the more you prospect, the more quantity you do, the better you're going to get at it. Okay. And guess what happens when you get better on the phone? You get more appointments. Guess what happens when you get more appointments? You get more listings. Guess what happens when you get more listings, guys? You make more money, dollar dollar bills, y'all. Okay, so you are constantly generating new business when you're when you're focused on volume. A lot of people think oh, I'm just going to make four four to six calls today, and we're just going to see. No, make ten times that, guys, because you're going to get better. You're going to reach a larger audience. This is a contact sport. I want everyone to write that in the chat. Okay, prospecting is a contact sport. Okay, the more hands you shake, the more money you make. Period, end of story, okay? And here's the other thing, guys. Think about it like, like high level, like philosophically. Are we the decision makers in a real estate transaction? Are we the decision makers in a real estate transaction? Yes or no? What do you guys think? Unfortunately, folks, we are not. Not as an agent, you're not. If you're an investor, sure, because you're the one stepping up and pulling the trigger. But as agents, guys, we we are we're, we're high paid referees, is what I say. But we we lead the horse to water. We cannot force that horse to drink. How many of you type a one in the chat if you've ever had a really amazing scenario where like, oh my god, this is a great deal, this and that, and when you just couldn't get your client to sign, like they they couldn't see the value, right? You with me, guys? Yeah, Lanny's with me. Yeah, if you've been in this business for any amount of time, but you're like, they don't even understand how good of a deal this is. That I. For, they can't even get out of their own way. It's very, very frustrating. So the point I'm making is, folks, we can't control the outcome of a real estate transaction. We can try. We can try to, we can influence it, but we can't control it. You guys see the difference between the two? Controlling it is you can determine whether it happens or not. Influence is like you can kind of like steer it to a certain degree. The point is, okay, the only aspect that we can control is our input because we are in charge of that. And what does that mean, guys? Ringy dingy, right? The calls that we make on a daily basis, those are the only one that the, the, the only thing that we can control. You guys with me? Okay? So remember, folks, if you want more control in your business, make more dials. Why? Cuz that's the only thing you can control the outcome of. You can control how many times you pick up a phone that day. You can control if you do it 5 days a week. You can control all these things. You can't control whether they sign the contract. You can't control whether the, the environmental comes back dirty. You can't control whether the appraisal comes back bad. You can't control whether the roof is old. None of these things you can control. What you can control is how many dials you make every day. Does this make sense, guys? You control what goes in the top of the funnel. Type a, a, a capital Y, capital E, capital S if you're with me. All right, guys? Cool. Okay, good, good, good. These are landing. Love it, love it. Good. All right, folks. Let's talk about the best time of day to call. Now, mind you, this study came from a company called Phone Burner. I think they analyzed, I think it was like, it's either 4 million or 11 million. It, either way, it was millions of dials, okay? Because they, they have a uh, an auto dialer, right? And what they found was the highest pickup rate, guess what, guys? In the mornings, okay? Um, now, here, here's one, one disparity I want to show you, okay? Technically, this shows that 10 a.m. is the highest pickup rate. But, okay, if you want to get a hold of business people, the earlier, the better. I don't recommend calling them before 8 o'clock. But guys, 8.02, you better be dialing. You know why? Because their employees haven't gotten in yet. And their secretary isn't in. And they're, they're getting into the office and getting settled before everyone comes in. So that's your best chance to have their undivided what? Attention. Okay, guys? All right? 
So type 805 if tomorrow you're going to pick up the phone at 805, okay? I recommend 8 o'clock. But pick up the phone between 8 and 805 and get to dialing. You will be shocked at how many people pick up before 830, okay? Highly, highly recommend. The other thing is, guys, evenings, okay? After the day calms down a little bit, all right? It's very, very helpful for you to check out. Like if, if you didn't get any meetings today, sit around. That. You Start dialing after uh, in the afternoon. You know, do another round. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Don't dial from 12 to 1. A lot of people are at lunch. But in, in, after that, absolutely possible, okay? And then Saturdays, folks, if you didn't get your numbers in for the week, guess what? You can still do them on Saturday, yep. Scott says uh, Friday afternoons for the same reason. And the day before a holiday, absolutely. The day before a holiday is gold, okay? Because people are a lot more relaxed. You know, Fridays, people love to, they're a little bit more, more laid back. Here's one thing, guys, the Friday effect, okay? Very, very important. Friday effect is super duper strong. You know why? People have like a psychological kind of end to the week. And what winds up happening is if you uh, you catch them on a Friday, you're more likely to get that listing sign. You're more likely to get that contract sign. You're more likely to get that thing taken care of because they're in their mind, they're like, oh, I just got to get this thing done before the weekend. I just got to get this thing done. I just want to clear my plate so I go off to the weekend and have some fun. With me, folks? Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, next up, all right. Remember, guys, consistency is key. Deals will fall through. There's nothing you can do about it. But even when you have too much going on, that's when you need to prospect the most. Guys, I've taught this method, okay, to a over a couple hundred people. And the biggest mistake I see people make, okay, is when the, they're, they get busy and they have a handful of listings and things start going under contract and they got three or four contracts going at once. That's when they need to be prospecting the most. Why? Because folks... If not, if you've ever had a roller coaster year, you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, I do all these things and I get a lot of business. And then, oh, I, I start taking this business and some of it falls through and some of it closes. And next thing you know, I'm down to zero in my pipeline. And then I start the pipeline up again. And guess what happens? Your, your income will follow suit with that, okay? So for that same uh, reason, that's why we prospect first thing in the morning. There's nothing that's gonna get in your way first thing in the morning uh, that, you, 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 uh, that, that you need to handle before 10 a.m. With me, guys? Okay, cool. There's a natural quietness in the day. I call it the the the, uh, the calm before the storm. Okay, that when that is what I call your in quotes new business time. That's when you put new business into your business. Because remember, none of you would ever starve a a child or a puppy or a kitten, right? Don't starve your business. Okay, you starve your business by not prospecting for it every single day. We have a long sales cycle, guys. There's a huge detachment between the input, the effort you put in and cashing a check. I've had it literally uh, three and a half years is my longest deal cycle I ever had from a property that I took the listing for, had it, went through COVID, deal fell apart three different times, three different buyers, yada, yada, yada. I finally sold it, but it was three and a half years from the time I prospected it to the time I put the money in my pocket. So you need to use your prospecting as your compass so that you have kind of like a North star to head towards every day. Because if you're, you, if you're looking to use the money that you make, folks, there, there's there's not enough there's not enough motivation because the the deals can be far off into the future. Okay, let's talk about how we use the the phone. Okay, a lot of people subscribe to postcards and this and that and the other thing. Folks, nothing beats the phone. Why? Because you can be a, in a new location every sixty seconds. Okay, so it's the highest leverage use of our time. You don't have to be there. Like when you're knocking on doors, I used to knock on doors, guys. Right? It, it, it's not where it's at. I promise you. You can leave messages, which is kind of like leaving like a penny in the piggy bank. Uh, and there's a cumulative effect. Uh, you can also drop messages. I don't recommend it for new business dropping messages, but you can if you're circle prospecting, that I will allow. And then if you really want to add a uh, rocket fuel to your business, okay, do it with a dialer. Very, very important. Okay, that helps speed you up. All right, so folks, remember, just do it. Okay, if you want to do the right things, more prospecting, more presenting, more following up, that is going to be the biggest contributor to your success than anything else, period, bar none. And then what you do is you, you, you try to delegate as much as possible off to a third party, uh, whatever is not worth your hourly rate. Folks, remember, implement. Information without implementation, big fat goose egg. Make sure that you are, are implementing something you learned today. Figure out that one thing, okay, and do it over and over and over again. And then next week, Figure out another thing that you're going to do and do that over and over and over again. What happens is there's a compounding effect. 
You with me, guys? There's a compounding effect. Does anybody know? Here's a cool little stat, okay? But do you, um, no worries, uh, Landy, if you want to hop on, we have a Thursday uh, at 1 p.m. as well, right? Uh, but for those of you that are interested, okay, if you just get 2% better per week, I know the guy that wrote uh, Atomic Habits, great book, by the way, okay? He says get 1% better a day. That's, it's, it sounds like a, a lot, you know, and it, it sounds like it's small, but it can be a lot. If, if you just get 2% better a week, okay, compound that over 52 weeks. Does anybody know what that is? Okay. That's 274% improvement. How many of you guys want to almost triple your business in the next 12 months? That's how you do it. 2% better a week. Okay. But it starts with implementation. Take something you learned today and implement it immediately tomorrow. Okay. You guys with me? Cool. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate your, your feedback and stuff, guys. Thanks for engaging. And I look forward to seeing some of you uh, tomorrow, some of you on Thursday, and the rest of you next uh, Monday. Talk to you soon. Be well, folks.